In today's video, we are going to be exploring Formic, a powerful library for handling forms in React. When it comes to form handling in React, we have a couple of options to choose from. We can use custom form handling or we can use third-party libraries like Formic. So why Formic actually? Formic is a popular library in React that is used for managing form states. So why do we need Formic? One is that a simplified form state management and it has built-in form validation and it also support error handling and it is compatible with various UI libraries like Material UI and others and it handles form submission. If we go by custom form handling, unless we implement all these ones by ourselves. But with Formic, it takes away all this complexity from us. So let's look at the final project that we are going to build. Over here, if I move my mouse or cursor inside the input field and I move outside from it, as you can see, we have the error message. Likewise, these ones. And if I open the console and I try to submit this form, I cannot because I need to provide the actual data. So over here, if I provide the username and I will say John, as you can see, the error is gone. And for the last name, I can say Do and last name and I will say Smith. And the email, I would say john at gmail.com. If I submit and let's check the console and I have the form being submitted. This is what we are going to build. Next step is that we need to create fresh React application and I have created mine as we see on the screen. If you don't have it, you can issue the snippet that is npx create dash react dash app and the name of your app and because i have it i'm not going to issue this command and i have opened mine as that next step is let's visit formic.org and over here it says that build forms in react without tears so it tells you how it simplify form handling so let's click on get started. Scroll down and we are going to install the package. You can use Yarn Art Formic or NPM I Formic. And let's get back to the terminal and issue the command as NPM I Formic and hit enter. But for me, I have already installed it. After installation, let's go ahead and start to code. I'll close this and before we proceed on, I've provided a template for you and we are going to use this template. So inside the SLC, I'm going to create one folder called component and inside the template, I'm going to copy the code and place it inside the component and I'm going to rename this one to sign up for. So I need to rename the components also. All right. Next step is we are going to render this component inside the app. I have trashed everything from it and I'm going to require the component as sign up form. Save it and let's have a look inside the browser. And here we go. And again, I have provided the CSS for you, which is this. And we are going to require the CSS inside the app here. So up here, I'll make use of import, then forward slash sign up form dot CSS. Save it and let's have a look. Well, I need to require it well. It's supposed to be lowercase sign up form. Now let's see, and this is the form. Inside this component, we haven't started working with Formic. 
it's just normal component for wrangling form. So let's go ahead and integrate formic into it. First of all, we are going to require the package and it goes like this. Import and we are going to destructure from the formic library. And inside what we need is called use formic. And inside here, we don't need use state, but instead we are going to use the use formic hook. And it goes like this. We bring in use formic as a function call, then you pass in the object. And we are going to assign to a variable called formic. And you can name it whatever you want. Inside here, we are going to provide some properties. The first one is the initial values. So it goes like this. Looking at the form, these are our input field. Username, first name, last name, and email. So we are going to provide the properties as username. By default, it is empty. First name. And by default, it's also empty. Last name and email. Great. So these are our initial values. Next step is on submit. And it goes like this. And these methods are provided to us by Formic. And for this, we are going to assign to a callback function as that. And inside this on submit, we have access to the values that we are submitting. And over here, we can make or send the data to a server or make HTTP request. But for this, we are just going to dump into the console. So if you go ahead and console log the values, we're going to see the values that we are going to provide. Before we do that, let's console log the formic, the one we assign to use formic here. With this one, open the console. And inside here, as you can see, we have all these methods given to us by formic, including the handle blur, handle change, handle submit, initial values is valid, and others. So we are going to use these methods given to us by Formic. Next step is we are going to bind use Formic with our form. Therefore, on the form itself, which is this, we are going to provide on submit. And as we saw inside the console, we have the method on handle submit. Next step is we need to handle the individual form input. So for the first one, that is the username, I'm going to provide these properties. The first one is name, which is a required attribute. The value for the name must be the same as the initial name that you use inside the initial values. Otherwise, it will not work. Next step is we are going to provide on change. And we have it from the formic dot handle change. Likewise, the value. We also have it on formic dot values. And on that, we have all the initial properties as that. And we need username. And next step is on blur. And also, you provide the formic dot handle blur and that is it as you can see we are not creating all these methods by ourselves but instead we are just using them so we are going to repeat ourselves so i'm going to copy all of these ones and for this you can remove the id so let's get into the first name let me have some enough space paste it and change username to first name, which goes like this. And we are going to paste it on the last name. 
as that and change this one to last name and lastly on the email and change this one to email save it and let's have a look and let's provide the values for the username as john now click on submit and let's check the console and we have the object with the values and if i refresh it and i click submit as you can see it's still submitted and we need to avoid that therefore we need to improve our code by using form validation and one cool thing i like about formic is that we can extend by using our custom methods for example we can add our own custom form validations but lucky for us formic is so powerful that it supports third-party packages or libraries so we are going to install a third-party package called yop so it goes like npm yop and this is used to implement form validation and for me i have it so i'm not going to install it after installation let's go ahead and handle the errors or validations therefore over here, we are going to require the formic as asterisk and it's going to be as job from the job package. There we go. And inside the use formic, we can add additional properties. And here I will say validation. And it goes like this we are going to use validation schema and here we can add our own validation schema but we are going to use the yop package if you're familiar with mongodb you've heard about schema which simply means it's a blueprint of creating an object out of it but for this one it's a blueprint for handling form input it tells us whether we should submit or whether some fails are required or not Therefore, we are going to use the yop package. On that, we have what is called object as a function call and provide object. Over here, we are going to map our values to the yop package. So first of all, we are going to validate the username and we assign to the yop package. And when I make use of dot, we have all these data types, whether it's a Boolean, number, date, or whatever, it support that. And since username is a string, we are going to use a string. And you can use number. All right, so let's stick to the string because username is a string. And as a function call. Next step is we are going to chain with some methods called maximum, meaning what will be the maximum length for the username? And we are going to support at least 15. So if the user provide username more than 15, we are going to throw or display this error as must be 15 characters or less. And lastly, if the user refuse to provide the value, then we are going to use what is called required and you provide a message as username is required. All right, so now we are done with the first one. With this one, save it and let's open the console. Let me refresh it. And if I submit, as you can see, I cannot because now we have added validation inside it. So we are going to implement for the rest of the input. So I'm going to copy that, paste it here and change this one to first name. And we will say that first name is required. And paste it and change this one to last name. Make sure to use the exact initial values here. And here as last name is required 
and lastly about the email you will see email is required all right so let's go ahead and then display the errors and lucky for us formic support that by using the methods so we are going to display the errors here so i will say display error here and it goes like this we are going to check on the formic we have a method called touched meaning that if the user touch the input field and move away it means that the user isn't providing any value therefore we can display something like this field is required that's what we call the touched so we are going to say that if the username is touched and we have error that is formic dot errors dot username if that's the case then we are going to display a div with the message and inside here we are going to use formic dot errors dot username otherwise we are going to display now great so let's provide some class name to beautify the error message and the class is called form error make sure to type the exact name otherwise it will not work so i'm going to copy this and place it inside the respective input fields so here we are going to change username to first name likewise the last name change to last name and lastly about the email change to email now we are done save it and let's check it out and we have the error messages being displayed as that as you can see with few lines of code we have complete form handling but again we can improve this form a little bit as you can see we are repeating ourselves and that is name on change value and on blur and we can simplify this by using a method called get field props from formic therefore we are going to remove everything from here and we are going to use the formic method we are going to use spread operator simply means that we are spreading all the properties including the errors the on blur the on chain and everything and we are going to use a method called get field props then you provide the field name which is username make sure to type the exact name as the initial values here with this one let's have a look as you can see for the first one we still have it but this time around we have simplified version and again we are going to copy the same to the irrespective input fields here and change this one to first name and you can remove the id here so let's also move to the last name and change this one to last name and copy that and for the email remove these guys and change this one to email save it and now everything remains the same if i move my mouse away i see the errors and i can type and submit and again we can also improve this code and one thing is that as you can see we are also repeating ourselves here by using these conditions to display the error so we are going to use components from useformic so let's see how we are going to simplify this in case you are okay with this one then you can maintain this but we can do more so here we are going to bring in form from formic and this fit component represent the individual input but it is dynamic it support whether it's a text 
or a number. And lastly, we are going to grab the error message component. Therefore, we are going to simplify or modify this code. So inside the return here, we are going to wrap the form from formic. And down here, we are going to wrap it as that. And next step is, we are going to pass in these props, initial values, on submit the validation inside the form component. Therefore, I'm going to select these guys. Validation, initial values, cut it from here, and we can remove this one. And inside the form here, we are going to paste it. Now, let's do some modifications here. For this one, it's going to be equal to an object. And here, as that. Two carry braces. Likewise, this one. We need to wrap inside an object as that. Likewise, the validation equal to and wrap inside object. All right, cool. Sorry, I made a mistake. This one is supposed to be formic component. So let's bring in the formic here and let's make sure that we have the formic here. And next step is, instead of using the native form here, we are going to use the form component. And for the form, we don't need to pass in the unsubmit. And also, for these input fields, we are going to use the field. So here, we provide the field. And we are going to remove these guys. And inside the field, the required attribute is called name. And the name value must be the same as the initial values inside the initial values of Formic. So we are going to provide name of username as that. And for the errors, we are going to avoid using these conditions by providing the error message component. And we are going to provide the name. And the name here must represent the initial values name. And next step is you provide the component, meaning that this error message can be a span or it can be h1 or div. So we are going to provide div for this. And lastly, let's provide the class name as form dash error. So we are going to repeat ourselves. So I'm copying the field and then the error message. And for this one, we are going to remove the input and then the error message and change this one to first name. Likewise, the last name, remove these guys and provide the last name. And lastly, about the email. Change this one to email. As you can see, we have simplified the code. Now, let's see the magic. We don't have any error. Refresh it and it's clean. If I click inside and I move away, I have the error like this one, like that, and like that. If I enter something here, the errors are going away. And for this, if I provide more characters, as you can see, must be 15 characters long. So if I submit, let's check inside the console and we have the same result. I encourage you to experiment with Formic and see how it can simplify your React forms. But in case you have some other features, would you like to see implemented with Formic? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe for more tutorials like this.